90% of the world's fish stocks are being fished at or beyond their sustainable limits. Growing demand and industrial fishing techniques are pushing some populations of cod and tuna to the brink of collapse, while millions of tonnes of other less marketable species are being used for fertiliser, fish food or simply discarded. I'm Sylvia Rowley in London, UK, where marine scientists are working together with local fishermen to get consumers hooked on sustainable seafood. Based in East London, a tiny startup by the name of Soulshare is hoping to change Londoners' relationship with fish. Bit of fish for dinner, gents. Order now or be disappointed. You choose how much fish you want, how often you want it. Um, and come and get it from us. Excellent. It's a bit like a veg box, but with fish. We work with a couple of inshore fishermen. We buy their entire catch and then hand it out to our members. It's a really good way of just getting your hands on amazing fish, trying things that maybe you haven't tried before, um, and also supporting the guy that caught it. I used to work in, in conservation, so it's a bit of a strange step for me to go from um, saving fish to now saving fish through eating fish. Just off the coast of New Haven on the south of England, we've come to find Martin. He's one of Solskjaer's main fishermen. Hi, Hiya. Hi, uh, nice how are to you? Meet, uh, yeah, Sylvia you again. Yeah. They're sneaking up on the That's <laughs> all right, thanks. Right, John. Right, right. right. Well, yeah. Right. My problem is that I can't actually really one. lift my legs up with these on. <laughs> Martin Fuller is one of over three and a half thousand small-scale fishermen working in English waters. But unlike many others whose families have been in the business for generations, he only took up the trade a decade ago. I've always been mad for fishing. I've always had a boat and I've always had time off work to go fishing. I just thought, silly, you know, I might as well just go and do it for a living. So what are we doing now? We're gonna, we've got a fleet of nets and we're going to haul it down the tide, then we're going to run inside and stow it up. I didn't understand any of that. <laughs> That's it. That Pick that one up, and we run down to that one. So the net runs between these two flags. Do you ever come and there's nothing in the net? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully not today, though. There we oh. go. <laughs> This catches the bigger fish. The other nets also catch big fish, but some of them catch a lot of small fish as well, which I try and avoid. So you're kind of avoiding this um, bycatch, the fish yes. that you're not looking for. But sometimes you can avoid everything. <laughs> Unlike industrial bottom trawl nets, which drag along the sea floor and can kill a wide array of marine life, Martin's net stays still in the water and the large holes means he's not undermining future fish stocks by catching lots of juveniles. Those he does accidentally net come in alive. See, that's legal size, yeah. but it's alive and it ain't worth nothing. So right, that goes back. back. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Oh, there we go. OK. Whoa. I mean, this doesn't seem to be a particularly easy way to make a living. How much more would you get, say, for a, a place if you sell it through Jack rather than just at the wholesaler? Jack gives us a flat rate of £5 a kilo. So, and the wholesaler might give me, I don't know, two or three quid for, for the same place. So it's quite a big difference, then. Yeah, it is, yeah. Soulshare members help keep Martin in business by giving him a good price and buying a set weight each week of whatever he brings in. We catch soles, place, dabs, cod, flounders, garfish, mackerel, herrings, bass, lobsters, crabs, grey mullet, red mullet. But if you ask any fishmonger what they sell the most of, it'll be salmon, cod and prawns and tuna. They'll be the four things that they sell more than anything else. And they're also some of the most kind of overfished. Exactly, yeah. Everyone that signs up for Soul Share, 
that's got the right idea because they're prepared to accept whatever turns up and have a go at all the different species and that. Spanking fresh, people will give it a chance. Is that a good catch? There seems to be quite a lot coming in. That's all right, yeah. I mean, you think we'd better get this net back before we end up in Brighton. Yeah. <laughs> Right. So what are we, are we going to, we're putting the net back in there? The net's going right? back in the water and I'll have it up again tomorrow morning. Okay. Yeah. I think this is what's missing from a lot of the way that we, that we eat today, yeah, you know? Yeah. There's such a big disconnect between yeah. what's on our plates and where it's come from. But that's how people want it. If they didn't, they'd do something about it, wouldn't they? Soulshare started in 2013 and now has 80 members in London who buy from Martin and a few other small-scale fishermen. From boat to icebox in a matter of minutes, the race is now on to get today's fresh catch straight up to Soulshare members in London. In the quest to keep the nation's fish stocks healthy, changing the way people consume fish is half the battle. So at the start of every new season, Jack and business partner Teresa run a workshop to help new members get to grips with their seafood. Thanks all for coming. We're going to go through gutting, we're going to show you how to prep a fish for the oven, we're also going to show you how to fillet fish. And by the end of today, you should all be able to do that quite nicely. Another <laughs> Lovely place, overlooked fish. This really is the bread and butter of a lot of our inshore guys. Um, very sustainable when caught in static gear. Um, they breed like the clappers. Soulshare's weight-based pricing model means sometimes members pay a premium for something like mackerel, but other weeks they strike lucky with lobster or oysters at below market rates. I like to try lots of different kinds of fish. I like the excitement of being like, what am I going to get in the box this week? And, and just going, I don't know what I'm going to do with that, and maybe read up about how to cook it and how best to cook it. Teresa supplies everybody with a recipe for the catch of the week, and members have started sharing tips, photos and recipes online. A lot of it about is, you know, creating a community around, around fish, and as you saw today, it's, it's a great way to bring people together. So it's about finding people that care about where their fish come from and linking them with the kind of fishermen that care how they catch their fish. <laughs> 